On July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed and the American Revolution began. In this video, we are going to talk about Kentucky's role in the Revolution. Before we get started, subscribe to the channel, like and share the video to help celebrate America's independence. We all know about the big battles of the Revolutionary War. Brandywine, Lexington and Concord, Trenton, Princeton. We know about Valley Forge, the Southern Campaign, the Northern Campaign, and all the other big events. But we never hear about what was going on in the Western Front of the war. Or even that there was a Western Front. You may be thinking, the Western part of the war, what was going on there? Kentucky wasn't even a state yet. A lot was going on in Kentucky or at the time, Kentucky County, Virginia. And one can argue, if it wasn't for the events of Kentucky, the outcome of the war could have been different. Let's start with what was going on before the war broke out. You had three major settlements, stations or forts, however you want to define them. James Harrod had settled Harrodstown in 1774, and Fort Harrod was being built in 1775. Fort Boonesboro was established by Daniel Boone in 1775 as well. And not long after that, St. Asaph in Fort Logan was also established in 1775. Tribes like the Shawnee, Wyandot, Uchi, and many more used Kentucky as a hunting ground, and these settlements were taking the game they hunted for survival. The Cherokee had sold land in Kentucky to the Transylvania Company with the Treaty of Sycamore Shoals. These forts were seen as huge threats to the Native American population, and more stations would follow in the coming years. So the Revolutionary War begins, and what happens? The Native Americans and the British see an opportunity to team up and fight against a common enemy. On the Native side, they want the colonists and the frontiersmen out of their hunting land. The British want to put pressure on the Western Front. If they are able to attack the colonies from the West, then they will be able to squeeze the Continental Army and gain another advantage. So with this alliance, many events follow. What is known as the Bloody Sevens, 1777, was a constant battle in Kentucky. Native Americans attacked settlements with British support. The British paid them for every scalp they brought back to Detroit, and during many sieges, the British sent their own soldiers to assist with the battles and sieges. One siege took place at Logan's Fort in May of 1777. Benjamin Logan, William Whitley, and seven other families, a free African American, and six other men survived the siege against Shawnee and British forces. Fort Herod also endured a siege in 1777 with a similar outcome. Shawnees surrounded the fort and the settlers held their ground until the Shawnee left. The following year, in September of 1778, the Shawnee and the British forces surrounded Fort Boonesboro. This was a more complicated siege because there was a lot of added drama. Daniel Boone had been captured and adopted into the Shawnee tribe by their chief, Blackfish. Daniel Boone had escaped to warn the settlers about the approaching attack. After many days, the Shawnee made their final attack and some bad weather came. The Shawnee saw it as a bad omen and they left the fort. British Lieutenant Governor Henry Hamilton was behind all these workings. He paid for the scalps and supplied the Shawnee. The Kentucky settlers begged for help from Virginia, but at the time, the Continental Army didn't have too many men to spare. So in comes George Rogers Clark. During this time, Clark was the leader of the Kentucky County Militia. He made his plea to organize a campaign against the Shawnee and other tribes to help prevent or at least hold off the attacks. Governor Patrick Henry approved and Clark set out on the Illinois campaign. Supported by many Kentucky frontiersmen, Clark had a successful campaign taking many villages and eventually ended with the capture of Henry Hamilton, who was escorted back through Kentucky. This was a big victory for Kentucky, but the fighting continued and another British supported invasion was led by Captain Henry Byrd in 1780. A thousand Shawnee, Delaware, and Miami warriors and 150 British troops invaded Kentucky. The big item that Byrd had brought with him this time was a cannon. More forts and stations had popped up over the past five years, and their plan was to go from fort to fort, clearing out all settlers. This was one of the most successful invasions by the Shawnee and British. They took many prisoners and three stations. They shot a hole through Ruddle's station. Martin's station was surrendered, 
and Grant's station was burned to the ground. With all this success, and the cannon being used, the army could have easily taken on the other settlements in Kentucky, but Captain Byrd called an end to the campaign due to the number of prisoners that had been taken and the logistics of continuing. Now the last invasion began in 1782, after the main British army had surrendered at Yorktown in 1781. 300 native warriors, which comprised mostly of Shawnee, and 50 British soldiers led by William Caldwell and Simon Gurdy began the invasion and surrounded Bryan Station. The siege lasted for two days. The crops and the livestock outside the fort were pillaged and killed, and then suddenly the British and Shawnee left the fort and headed east. The next day, more soldiers arrived to help support Bryan Station. Some of these leaders were Daniel Boone, John Todd, Stephen Trigg, and Hugh McGarry. Benjamin Logan was still in Lincoln County gathering more troops and heading to Bryan Station. Boone wanted to wait for Logan and then pursue the army of the British and Shawnee, but the other men wanted to take chase immediately. Reluctantly, Boone followed them. The next day, they arrived at Blue Licks, which is now Robertson County. They arrived at the Licking River, and Hugh McGarry led the charge across the river. It was a trap. Boone said, we are all slaughtered men. John Todd and Stephen Trigg were both killed. Boone's son, Isaiah, was also shot at his father's side. Boone and McGarry were able to retreat, and it was a devastating loss for the Kentuckians. For retaliation, George Rogers Clark, with Daniel Boone and Benjamin Logan, led an expedition into the Ohio country. They burned and destroyed many Shawnee villages, but no real battle took place, because the Shawnee retreated to other villages before Clark and the others arrived. That wraps up the events that took place in Kentucky, and there's probably some, probably many, that I left out, but there's more. The first and fifth governor of Kentucky, Isaac Shelby, also gained his military prestige during the Revolutionary War. He got the nickname of Old Kings Mountain because of his victory at Kings Mountain. He fought the advancing British troops back again and again, eventually sending them in a full retreat. And finally, there are 120 counties in Kentucky. Here's a quick list of the counties named after Revolutionary War veterans or important figures during the Revolution. Richard Butler, John Campbell, William Casey, William Christian, George Rogers Clark, James Estill, William Grayson, Nathaniel Green, Silas Harlan, Samuel Hopkins, Henry Lee, Francis Marion, Richard Montgomery, Daniel Morgan, Peter Muhlenberg, George Nicholas, William Oldham, Kashmir Plasky, John Todd, Stephen Trigg, Joseph Warren, Anthony Wayne, William Woodford, Benjamin Lincoln, Marquis de Lafayette, Hugh Mercy, Green Clay, Isaac Shelby, Charles Scott, Christopher Greenup, James Garrett, Charles Carroll, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, Patrick Henry, Robert Livingston, George Mason, John Adair, Daniel Boone, Simon Kenton, Benjamin Logan, Richard Calloway, John Floyd, William Russell, William Whitley, James Monroe, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Nelson, James Madison. So as you can see, Kentucky had a major role in the Revolutionary War. It's not talked about enough. Many battles and sieges occurred and many brave stories came from it. There are living history reenactments of the Battle of Blue Licks, the Siege of Fort Herod, Logan's Fort, and Fort Boonesboro. I highly recommend attending all these events. A final important point to be made connecting Kentucky and the Revolution together. After the war, many soldiers were seeking payment for their service. What does Virginia and other states do? They issue land grants to veterans, and numerous veterans pack up their families and head to settle Kentucky. A lot of people in Kentucky today probably have ancestors who came over here because of a Revolutionary War land grant, myself being one of them. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video. Thank you again for watching. If you'd like to support our channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod or become a member of our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to get more Kentucky history content. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.